Well, hello again, folks. In last week's video, I was showing you our building project. I did a little cost analysis at the end, and I received a boatload of comments on that video. A lot of people were amazed that in today's lumber market, and we were pretty amazed as well, in today's lumber market, this structure came out to be a very, very affordable build. What we are building here is a garage, basically a garage, but in the title of that video, I said this would make an awesome cabin or a homestead. This structure in itself, the footprint 24 by 28, would make a nice size cabin or a home for a small family. When I built my first home, when I was 27, that was 24 by 28, and that was a nice size place. Wasn't anything extra, but we weren't hurting for space. It was a good size build. So, I want to show you what I would do differently if I was going to make this living space. So let's take a look. When I first decided to build a garage here, my plan was to leave this whole section, 12 by 24 foot, as a carport. Now we have decided to enclose one third of it. And I'll show you what we're gonna do. Everything from here forward is going to remain carport, but then we are going to enclose the rest of it, frame up a wall here, here, here. This back wall will continue all the way to this corner and wrap right around. There'll be floor joist in here, and then part of that wall is going to come out. My original plan had the stairs coming down inside the garage to a landing and then turning and going down on the other side of that wall. But now they're going to come straight down into this section once this becomes living space. So we were building this as a garage with some usable space above it. What would I do differently if I was building this as a structure to live in? Well, for one thing, I wouldn't be building so close to the ground. I've talked about this in a video in the past. If you're building on piers, which is a very affordable way to go, you're building on piers, get that building up off of the ground. I would have the floor system at least 30 inches above the ground. I would still do the perimeter that you saw here. Then I would put a knee wall, three foot or so, above that then put in the floor system, all the floor joists and the plywood on top of that. Then frame the walls and proceed in your normal building fashion. When we added the screen porch to the back of the camp, the floor system was above the ground as you can see. Instead of leaving it open, I enclosed it and made usable storage space beneath it. So this is what I've got going on so far with my storage area. I've got it framed up with pressure treated as you can see. And then over here, I've got a couple layers of tar paper on the ground just to keep some of the moisture down. I've got it all framed up with pressure treated. I'm going to put pressure treated plywood down here and pressure treated plywood on the back of this here. This is going to be all dry storage. The concrete piers come a little ways off of the surface of the ground. Then I built a floor system out of pressure treated lumber and sheathed it with three quarter inch pressure treated. I studded up on top of that floor in the same manner that you build house walls on top of your deck. So now beneath the screen porch, what I have is basically storage space like a shed would offer you. I have wooden floor, walls, it's dry, and I can keep it rodent free. So what I decided to do with this when I was building it, I did half of the screen porch with the wooden floor, 
the other half behind me here as a dirt floor because having some areas with a dirt floor is very handy because as you see we live off the grid and we have a truck toolbox buried in the dirt and we keep beverages and uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff in that box and it works as nice cool storage and it keeps things from freezing all winter long because it's buried in the ground. So if you're going to build on piers build it up off the ground a little bit it'll give you some storage space underneath because now I have all the storage but on the same footprint no added size and when you're filing for a building permit you get charged by the square footage of your footprint so here we go making use of it now the upstairs of this structure there's enough room up here to make a big master bedroom a bedroom in an office uh, even a small apartment so not only do we have all of this usable space up here once we enclose that 8 by 12 foot section of the carport and then the stairwell goes down into that area you combine that with up here that makes a nice sized apartment if you didn't want to have a lean-to or carport you could enclose the entire thing so the 24 by 28 foot footprint would all be living space and then you have this nice loft up here that would make a nice house yeah and to have it dried in for under 10 grand in today's market that's really affordable as far as I'm concerned so we're going to take a little commercial break as they say and I will be right back with some ways that we could cut a bunch of cost off of that build we'll be right back Some of the steps that we took during this build were a different approach than I would normally take. I will explain why I took the action that I did and give you something to think about because if you eliminated some of the things that we did, then you could save some bucks that could be used further down the line in the project. So let me explain. So first off, our initial intention was just to have that 12 by 20 foot area open carport. My intention at the time was just to put strapping over the roof rafters and then screw the metal down to the strapping. So the underside of the metal would be exposed. And that would be just fine for that application. If this garage was never going to be heated and it was just used as storage space, I would eliminate the plywood on the roof entirely. And at 50 something dollars a sheet, that would be a big savings. And by having no plywood, that would mean you would not need any membrane. And at 70 to 180 or so dollars per roll, there's another big savings. This is all money that could be used further down the line. But since my structure is going to be heated, I prefer to have a plywood roof, the membrane, then the strapping, then the metal. That's the way that I prefer to build. So once we decided to enclose one third of that carport, I wanted to plywood that section of roof, and it was just easier for us to just plywood the whole roof, get it covered, while we had the stuff there, get it done, even though it was a few hundred dollar extra added to the cost. Metal roofing has gone through the roof, pardon the pun, right? The cost of metal roofing has gone way up. Availability is questionable. So I don't have the time right now to be playing these games. I can get the plywood, I have the membrane, let's get the roof done even though there's extra cost. Plus, in this application, where snow will be sliding off of the dormer roof, plowing down onto that lower roof, having the roof plywood was a just a good idea. So, that's one thing, one way to cut cost if you have the time and the materials to do things differently. You probably noticed that I use a subfascia of 2x stock 
on all of the roof trim. This is just a method that I prefer. Gives a nice strong overhang. It allows me to nail my finish fascia wherever the boards end and not have to cut them on layout. There's a lot of reasons why I do it this way, but I've also done several builds without using a sub fascia, just nailing your finished pine to the rafter tails, and it is just fine. Eliminating the sub fascia will eliminate some of the cost of the project. So here, including the overhang, I have 26 feet of 2x8. There's 18 foot of 2x6 there. And on this side, there's another 26 feet of 2x6. That could all be eliminated from the project price. There's one more thing that I want to address that people have been asking me about. You saw that I sheathed the building with T111, but I sheathed the dormer with half-inch plywood. Why did I do that? Well, let me explain. <laughs> T111 is your sheathing and your siding all in one. That's what I like about it. You sheathe your wall, stand it up, your siding is all done. You just have to paint it, right? But when you're uh, flashing a dormer, you have your flashing of your roof, and it usually comes up your sheathing, and then you have your siding go over that flashing, and it's all done in a fashion like gives it the shingle effect. If I sheathe the wall with T111, and then I have my roof flashing come up when I do the metal, and it comes up over the T111, and you have those grooves, you're going to have to cock the hell out of it. And I'm not going to like the finished product. I'm not going to like the way it looks. One matter around that is to put solid blocking in the lower part of the cheek wall and nail my flashing to that and then put the T111 over that. But right now, I can't think that far ahead. And again, we just want to get this building up and get it covered. So there's not a whole lot of plywood on that dormer. The face of it is mostly windows. The cheek walls don't use that much. So it was worth it for me, once again, just to get it done, get it covered, get the building dried in, and then when we're doing the metal roof and I'm flashing that, the flashing will come up over that plywood get it all flashed, then I'll put the T111 over the flashing and things will be done and looking the way they should be. Yeah man, so that's why we did what we did and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below in one of the upcoming vlogs I will do some Q&A. There's been a lot of questions coming in and I've just been writing them down and we'll do a little Q&A coming up sometime soon. So I think that answers all your questions, folks. Gives you a little encouragement for your own build. Hopefully the lumber prices come down so we can get back at it and build that new homestead in the spring. So that's it for now, folks. All the best to you. God bless. What do you think? It's like a fit. puzzle piece. Let's see if it fits. Let's <laughs> see how I did. Looks good. Frank and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end. Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss.